Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Gary Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing two different medications and comparing these two medications. One is Tylenol or acetaminophen, and the other is Advil or ibuprofen. We're going to talk about their mechanism of action or how they work. We're going to discuss indications or reasons we would give these medications to patients, as well as contraindications or reasons patients would not be able to use either medication. We'll then discuss examples of dosing for different indications for each medication. And then we'll finish it off with side effects with percentages, again, for both medications. I've put together some slides for you to go over these different topics, so let's jump right into it. Now, just before we get into talking about the medications themselves, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Now, speaking about the mechanism of action or how these medications work, starting with acetaminophen or Tylenol. So acetaminophen is a centrally acting analgesic, anti-pain, and antipyretic or anti-fever medication. The mechanism of action for reducing pain may be due to an inhibition of central prostaglandin synthesis, namely cyclooxygenase or COX-2. It reduces fever by inhibiting the, formula, the formulation and release of prostaglandins in the central nervous system and by inhibiting endogenous pyrogens. Now speaking about ibuprofen or Advil, this medication is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or an NSAID. It exhibits analgesic, again anti-pain, and antipyretic, anti-fever, activities by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. Now what about indications or reasons we would give this medication to a patient? So for acetaminophen or Tylenol, we may see it used for mild to moderate pain. It can also be used for moderate to severe pain if it was to be used with opioids. It can be used to treat fever as well as arthritis. Now with ibuprofen or Advil, we may see it used for pain, fever, headache, migraines, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, as well as primary dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation. In terms of contraindications or reasons a patient would not be able to use these medications, so with acetaminophen, if a patient had a hypersensitivity to acetaminophen or any other component of the formulation, we would not give this medication, as well as if they had severe hepatic or liver impairment or active and severe hepatic disease. For ibuprofen, again, if they had a hypersensitivity to ibuprofen or any other component of the formulation, we would not give this medication. This medication cannot be used surrounding a coronary artery bypass graft surgery or cabbage surgery. And lastly here, if a patient had asthma, urticaria, or other allergic type reactions following aspirin or other NSAID administration in the past, they would also not use ibuprofen. Now just for some examples of dosing with these medications, so one thing to say about dosing is that it may change in terms of the maximum dose, especially if it was to be prescribed by a physician or if it was purchased over the counter. But again, just for some examples, with acetaminophen or fever, we may see 650 milligrams orally every four to six hours. For mild to moderate pain, again, we may see 650 milligrams orally every four to six hours, or we could see 1000 milligrams orally every six hours. For moderate to severe pain, we may see it intravenously, for example, here, with 1,000 milligrams intravenously every six hours, or 650 milligrams intravenously every four hours. Now for some examples of dosing with ibuprofen or Advil, in fever, we may see 200 to 400 milligrams orally every four hours or six hours as needed. For pain, the dosing would be the same, so 200 to 400 milligrams orally every four to six hours as needed. And for primary dysmenorrhea, we may see 400 milligrams orally every four hours as needed. Again, keeping in mind that there would be a maximum daily dose in play here. Now for some common side effects with these medications. So for acetaminophen, we may see pruritus or itchiness 5% of the time. 5% of patients may experience constipation. Nausea may happen up to 34% of the time. And vomiting may happen up to 15% of the time. 1-10% to of patients may experience a headache. And insomnia may happen 1-7% to of the time. Agitation may happen in 5% of patients. Now for ibuprofen or Advil, a rash, heartburn, nausea, and dizziness may all happen 3-9% to of the time, and a headache may happen 1-3% to of the time. Alright, that's all we're going to talk about today in this video comparing Tylenol or acetaminophen and ibuprofen or Advil. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to go by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. So for today, take care.